Elder Scrolls has been around for what seems like forever. It began 26 years ago as a small RPG heavily inspired by Ultima Underworld. Over the years it became a gigantic cultural monument and it is to this day one of the most played franchise in gaming. Today we focus on its most popular opus with over 30 million copies sold. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. One they fear. In their tongue, he is Dovahkiin. Dragonborn. Welcome to the Game Dev Pantry, a series where we analyze and recreate interesting mechanics in Unreal Engine. If you want to, you can always grab the project and follow along using the link in the description. Needless to say that Skyrim has had a huge impact on gaming culture. Its community has created more than 40,000 mods for a game which has been released a total number of 9 times. With its amazing open world nature and many tools for player expression, it's easy to see why this game is still beloved by its community to this day. The character customization is one of its best selling point with its 10 playable races and 18 skill trees to choose talents from. In Skyrim, you can be a warrior, a mage, a rogue, a mix of those things, or simply all of those things. This ensures that players can live their preferred fantasy and that they can morph their playstyle to their liking. Even though Skyrim has a linear main quest, its best parts are all about emergent narrative. Players live the Skyrim experience through a string of minute choices that create very unique stories. This core idea leads to a lot of memorable moments that really intimately belong to each player, which can explain the emotional attachment that players have developed for the game over time. In today's video, we will focus on an iconic mechanic of Skyrim, the Fus Roda, or Unrelenting Force. Fus Roda! This mechanic is acquired through the Dragon Shout system, which allows the player to unlock powerful magic powers. Basically, the player has to search dungeons to discover new words of powers, which are unique spells. To learn how to use those words though, the player must spend dragon souls, which is obtained by killing dragons. This system builds really well into the core fantasy of the game because it allows the player to unlock new skills via exploration, invest in those skills by accomplishing challenges, and do those two things completely independently from the other skill system of the game. In other words, this system allows for extra customization of playstyle while being completely detached from other progression systems, such as levels or skills. But the best part of this system is that it's introduced with this mechanic. This mechanic, while being simple, is a lot of fun, and it sticks perfectly with the franchise's somewhat wacky aesthetic. This mechanic can be deconstructed in three steps. First, the player will input an intensity into the shout with a press and release of a button. Then, the shout is released and acts as a projectile that passes through everything. Finally, everything that is touched by the shout reacts as it should. Let's start with the charge input. The unrelenting force has three possible behaviors, all scaling in intensity, casting time and cooldown time. The first behavior will stun the characters that are hit for a very short amount of time. The second one will stun them for an even longer duration. While the strongest version of the unrelenting force will sweep them away in a ragdoll fashion. Of course, these behaviors are all affected by the character's stagger resistance, but we won't cover that part in this video. Let's get into the engine now. When the shout button is pressed, we need to start a timer. If the player releases the shout button before this timer arrives at 0.2 seconds, it will launch the first version of the shout. If the timer reaches 0.2 seconds, it will launch the hold behavior, which will fire an animation and a sound that looks like this. Boost. If the shout button is released between those 0.2 and 0.4 seconds, it will fire the second version, which smoothly follows the hold behavior like so. Boost. 
and if the shout button is released after 0.4 seconds, or if it reaches 0.6 seconds, it will automatically fire the third behavior, just as shown. Bruce, Each version of the shout has some common behaviors, such as playing an anime montage or firing the shout projectile, making the screen flash and starting a cooldown. However, these also differ based on intensities and play different sounds on release. So what we did is that we created a function called shout which regroups every common element but still tracks the intensity of the shout through the power level variable. This variable will determine the cooldown duration and will be used in the shout actor to define the behavior later down the line. When the shout is released, we will look at the timer to define the behavior and fire the specific elements and then fire the shout function according to the power level. Now that we've set up our charge input, we can follow through with the shout projectile. For this, we've created an actor with a sphere collision as its root. This actor will simply travel in a direction at a fixed speed and eventually destroy itself. Every time the actor overlaps with another, it will fire an interface that we've created called Fusroda. To make sure the same actor isn't overlapped twice, the shout will keep in memory every actor overlapped, and, before firing the interface, it will make sure that the actor hasn't already been overlapped. This actor will be created when the shout button is released and serve as the messenger from the player to the overlapped NPCs. To make sure the shout feels more impactful, we've added a visual effect using Niagara. Bruce, Next on the list is the NPC's reaction to the shout. When the NPC is hit by the shout, it will receive a Fusroda interface call. This interface will have specific behaviors depending on the power level. If the power level is 0 or 1, it will play an animation at different play rates and stun the AI for the duration. We quickly set up an animation blocking using Control Rig, but didn't focus on a polished result since we only need it for feedback. If the power level is 2, the shot will sweep the NPC off of its feet. This behavior is a little more complex because it requires more than just animation. We need to simulate physics on the skeletal mesh to add a directional impulse. Once that's done, we need to link the ragdoll pose to the getting up animation, and that's where it gets a little tricky. To do this, we need to use the pose snapshot function and the animation blueprint. This function will save the bone's position as a pose. It's quite amazing because with this, we can blend back to another pose, making transitions between ragdoll simulation and animation relatively seamless. However, if we use it as is, the rotation and local position of the mesh will be completely out of place. To quickly fix this, we use the simple trick. We went into the physics asset of the skeletal mesh and put the root into kinematic mode meaning it won't move when in ragdoll. We also removed the collision on it. Then, we went into the constraint of the pelvis and changed its linear limits. Here's what the simulation should look like. With these changes, we should be able to see a smooth transition from ground to upward position. Now we have it, a splendid recreation of the unrelenting force. We added a patrolling system to the AI and other details so it would feel like Skyrim a bit more. And here's the result. Thank you again so much for listening, we hope you liked this video. If you want to support us, give us a like, subscribe or share our content. We would also like to take the time to thank our patrons for their amazing support over the last months. If you want to join them in supporting us, you can go to our Patreon which gives you access to our cozy Discord server. Have a good one.